I got a comment in one of my videos a few weeks ago arguing that I should not run the preamps on my interface very hot because the noise from them is gonna interfere with the measurement. I was talking about gaining up your microphone a good bit so you don't have to run your pink noise super hot in the room. I wanna see in that video, I did say you can turn them all the way up and some interfaces are a little bit unstable at their minimum and maximum values. I will give them that, but I've not found that the case, at least with the two interfaces that I've used. Right now I've got the Evo 8 from Audi. It's been fantastic, but I formerly had the Scarlett from Focusrite. So is this true? Are the noisy preamps and budget interfaces actually going to interfere with your measurement or should you just run the pink noise hot? You should be able to run that at a conversational level, but to get good input meters into Smart or your audio analyzer, if you're running it low, you have to get level somehow, and that's with your preamp. So what's the give? Or is the preamp actually gonna mess up my measurement? And that's something that we're gonna check out today. We're gonna be diving into three different tests to analyze what's going on. First, it's gonna be our absolute noise floor test. So I'm gonna unplug the preamp, look at it in spectrum mode, crank the gain all the way up and see if there's a change. Second, we're gonna look at the noise versus preamp test with a sine tone. I'm gonna to run a 1K sine tone at negative 10, looping back in. So that's the output of the generator coming in. And then I'm going to be offsetting that with different gain amounts, starting at zero, then add 10 dB, subtract 10, 10 dB from the generator, then add 10, subtract 10, add 10, subtract 10. So that will be the same incoming level, but I'm just increasing the mic pre-gain. Is this, what does this do with the noise floor? And lastly, in the most important measurement is getting the mic preamp level versus coherence test. So with my measurement set up right here, I'm gonna be playing pink noise out and capturing a measurement with my mic preamp gain at 50 dB. That's the maximum amount. And then I'm gonna bring it down to 40 down to 30, down to 20, down to 10. And of course the signal level is going to drop coming in, but does that change coherence? Basically my measure of transmission quality of my measurement. And that's the number one thing, or one of the biggest things that's gonna be able to tell you the quality of your measurement is your coherence. Can we trust that data? So low coherence means lots of noise, very high and consistent coherence means noise is not present or at least is not enough present in your measurement to have any harm on the data. All right, so let's jump right in and see if this has any weight. Let's talk through our measurement setup first, then we'll jump into each of our three tests, starting with the absolute noise floor test. Today I'm using Smart V9.1 with my Audient Evo 8 as the interface. And that's me handling our ins and outs. I'm running output one in my trusty Fostex speaker right here for our third test. And then output two is actually looping back into my loop input right here. I've got it unplugged now for our first test, but we'll, we'll add that in a second. And then here on input one is my EMX 7150 microphone. We'll be using that for our transfer function. First two will be here in spectrum mode. Then we'll jump over here to transfer function for our third. And what's great about version 9.1 in Smart is if I hit Shift E, bring up my input meters, I now have gain tracking enabled so I can actually control the preamps for the unit right here. Very cool feature, excited about that. Don't have to jump back and forth between apps. All right, so let's jump into our first test or absolute noise floor. So the reason I got this unplugged is I didn't want any residual noise from the output that's looping back to contaminate our measurement. So this is the mic pre unplugged at zero dB of gain. And that's what you're seeing here. So what we can notice is that the noise is very, very low. We're down here close to negative 144 dB. So let's capture that. So noise floor, we'll do it zero dB gain. That's what we'll name that. Now, We've got that measurement active, but now I'm gonna do plus 50. Let's crank that all the way up and see what changes. Do we notice any real difference is the, is the North floor, noise, noise floor moving with it? So noise floor plus 50 dB. We'll hide our active measurement. And now we're gonna go down here to noise floor. I can click and drag it up and let's compare the two. So up here in the top right, I can actually see my trace offset, or this is a spectrum measurement. And this is weird. It's only 35 dB of increase to get it to the same level in the top end. And even if I brought it to be level with this low end stuff, excuse me, down here, um, that's 43, that's not 50 to make it equal. So what's going on here? So I think our, uh, I've hit Y to clear our offset. 
Bring this back down here. I think the noise we're actually seeing is the actual digital limit of working in 24 bits. So if you if you go back to our digital audio theory, at 24 bit, we get approximately six dB per bit of dynamic range. If you multiply it out, that gets us to negative 144. So the actual self noise of the preamp is lower than the actual gain we would give it. So we're not seeing this move 50 dB. So I wanna make that clear that this is not a noisy preamp to begin with. We are seeing a little bit of a spectral change here in the low end. It's a little bit of a LF tilt. So I'm wondering if that would track or not, but interesting to find that the, the, the self noise of this preamp is very, very low. All right, so let's do our second test, which is the noise versus preamp gain test. So we're actually gonna run a sine tone into this guy and check a few things out. So I'm gonna turn on my loop in input, bring my gain back to zero. And my signal generator, again, I'm running this out of an output into this input is at negative 10. Let me engage that. Boom. So now I see this sine tone, it's coming out at negative 10, coming into the interface with zero dB of gain. And this is the level that I get it at. So this peak right up here looks like at negative 14.85. And we see some harmonics. They're, they're evenly spaced at 1K multiplied by 2, 2K, 3K, 4K. Uh, so we are getting some distortion on the way in. So that's interesting. You know, I apart from just talking about this actual measurement and whether or not that, that YouTube comment was true about this noisy PM gain effective measurements, I also just want you to see that you can answer a lot of these your own questions yourself. And this is what I, I'm walking you through. I can be pragmatic about it in a software like Smart right here. So what I'm gonna do with the rest of this test is I'm going to now just offset in 10 dB increments. I'm gonna decrease the sine tone output by 10 dB, then crank up the preamp gain by 10 dB and keep going until we max it out. So now I'm going to save this guy and I'm gonna just do, call it zero mic minus 10 gen as far as mic pre, okay? Keep going here. Now bring this down to minus 20 and go here now to plus 10. Let's turn our generator. We see if I cycle through our traces here, it's the same peak output. Now we just raise the noise floor a little bit. Capture that, plus 10 mic, minus 20 gen. Keep going through here. Add 20 dB of gain, or generator first, averager, plus 20 mic, minus 30 gen. Just keep rattling through these. Now to 30, reset. Plus 30 mic, minus 40 gen. So we're just keeping the same 10 dB delta with everything. Keeping on going here. plus 40 mic, minus 50 gen. Here we are. Last one. Thanks for hanging with me. Again, I, I could have just showed you all this data, but I want to see you to see how I got here. That's plus 50 mic, minus 60 gen. All right, let's kick this off here, hide it, and now look at our measurements. I want to have them in a certain order and they are now. So this is our first test. So this is interesting. We're, that's where we're seeing actually the most amount of distortion in our measurement is with the mic preamp at zero dB. I do know, and I've tested this, that if I run the signal generator at zero, I do clip the output, but not here. So let's now overlay this guy. I still see a little bit of harmonic distortion, but actually lessens as I move up my mic input gain. So this is telling me it might be something with the converter itself. It's not the preamp adding distortion. Maybe we just don't have the full amount of converter level to make it happen. That, again, this is just a guess. Now I am plus 20. Again, still, still the same peak signal amount right here, still at negative 12.85, but we have less harmonic distortion again. Keep going here, plus 30 dB. We have a little spike. So if I had to compare that spike, I'm gonna turn on some averaging so it's a little bit easier to see. Yeah, that guy at negative 77 versus 
that peak here at negative 96. So it's almost a 20 dB difference in the amount of harmonics. Even though we're running the preamp 30 dB hotter, we're lessening the amount of distortion, okay? Let's get our high resolution data back here. So with no banding, turning on plus 40. Now we have zero harmonic distortion, right? So that's actually with the mic pre at 40 plus 40 dB, or the harmonic distortion is actually gets swallowed up in the noise. So I'm not saying there isn't at all, but like, well, where are we getting this noise from? Well, I'm proposing here that's actually because we there is noise in the output and since the signal generator is way low the sig gen is way down at negative 50 that means we're having to work a lot hard so a lot harder so we're the noise floor inherent in the output is being brought up as we gain it so this is not noise from the preamp itself we're, we're just bringing up the noise that was available in the output that was passing with the sine wave itself and now we're up here to plus 50. We're at negative 15. Here is that peak. And then the noise, the highest peak in the noise right here at 1.8K is negative 94. So that is, let's see what that is. Eight, let's do negative 15 to 994. Still 79 dB of difference. So again, not gonna, even with that noise from the output, it's not from the preamp that's still not gonna ruin anything, all right, as far as our measurement goes. And I'm gonna prove that, well, like, well, how much separation between signal and noise do you need to get a good measurement? Now we're here for our third test, and this is the mic preamp level versus coherence test. So what we're gonna do is capture a transfer function of my little speaker right here at our five different preamp levels of like 50 decibels and stepping down to zero dB. I guess that'd be six different ones and seeing if our coherence changes. So what does our coherence tell us? Basically tell it's a, it's a qual transmission quality indicator of our data. So if I go to this Mercy Fort Smith show, uh, this is the trace I got here at front of house. You see this squiggly red line? <laughs> If that's really squiggly and way down towards the bottom right here, that means I have low coherence. It was a very reverberant room. It's an okay measurement in and of itself. It's lined up, but this is, it was just really far away. And that spot was technically out of the PA coverage because I prioritize coverage for the audience, but coherence does not look good. Versus we're about to measure my speaker, you're gonna see this red line mm, suck up all the way towards the top. And if it's all the way to the top, that means it's 100% coherent. That means the data is confident that what it's reading is like, oh, this is signal and not noise. If the coherence trace is low, that means there's a lot of noise in your measurement. So if noisy preamps are going to affect our measurement, then we would also see a drop in coherence. So let's test that out. Hide this guy gonna kick on my signal generator and I have my preamp gain now at plus 50 and we'll bring it down. My loop input here is at zero. All right, just gonna call that plus 50. So that's the amount of gain we had. I'm gonna keep the signal generator the same and we're just gonna see a drop in level on our traces, but then we'll normalize them and cycle through and see if they're all gonna be the same. Now turn this down to 40. Plus 40, let's keep going. down to 30 decibels. All right, plus 10. Here we are, let's move to our last one, zero dB of gain on the microphone. Gonna squish 
my measurements here. And now we see all at one place, each of these measurements all separated by 10 dB. Hide this guy. They're all here. So here's zero. And I can use Z to cycle through all these traces. And the coherence trace, which we're looking at again, right up here, I don't see it move at all. And again, cycle through, looking at zero, plus 10, here's plus 20, 30, 40, 50. So again, this is the exact same data, the exact same coherence, and now there's a 50 dB differential in my microphone. I am gonna normalize the data like I promised you, sorry. Yeah, so I just shift clicked here at 1K and all of the traces line up exactly the same. So, and that's at 1 48th of an octave, even with no smoothing at all, no averaging at all, these are exactly the same. So what does that mean for us? This means, that you can do this type of test yourself and see if this is going to be something that happens with your interface. The original video that I post where, where someone was talking about the preamp level, I had my other Scarlet interface, which I don't have anymore. But again, this is the Evo 8. It's $200 for four mic pre's. That's, I would call that in the budget range. So it's not because this is the best engineering in the world. It's because this is, uh, it's just, preamp noise is not a thing that's going to affect your measurement unless something's broken or just flat out <laughs> uh, not doing well. But here's the thing. We really don't need to have that big of a difference in the, the signal and the noise to get really, really good coherence. So I have a, a, a nice bonus last fourth test for you just as a thank you for sticking around here. And we're actually going to go back to the same measurement we just did. And we were at negative 10 as our signal generator level. But now I want you to look and see, well, just how loud do we have to have our pink noise to get good data, how to, to keep coherence, if you will. So I'm going to crank it at negative 10, just like we were, but then I'm going to bring down the generator slowly and we'll see how long it takes before our coherence starts to drop. So there I'm at minus 30. So that was 20 dB down for where we were. That's the same thing as a 10X uh, or uh, div dividing our original level by 10, right? So let's keep going. Another 6 dB. Now there's a train outside, so that's why you saw <laughs> those mid frequencies jump up. So even with the train going by and barely being able to hear the pink noise here, I'm still able to get really quality data, especially in the top end 1K and up. So there you have it. I can definitely say that the preamp noise phenomenon in your measurements, messing things up if you run them hot is definitely not a thing. So if you want to run your signal generator low in the room, so you're not making folks mad from having pink noise loud, then you're going to have to get your preamp gain up while you are measuring just so you're getting good levels. And that's okay. Again, it may not have to be all the way up, but it's usually a pretty healthy level. And then for show, you're going to calibrate it with your SPL calibrator and turn it back down to a level that is appropriate for that. But for tuning, don't be afraid to turn it up and get good levels coming in. Again, my name is Michael Curtis. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you next time.